Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 games I'm looking forward to playing. Last week we had a bit of a uh, touchy subject we were talking about, so check that out if you haven't yet. We are talking about censorship in the Dragon Quest series. This week I wanted to do something on a bit of a lighter note. So today I wanted to talk about the games that I am most looking forward to playing and uh, starting on the Super NES. In fact, this was actually a Super Famicom game that was never released here. Number 10. Tengai Makio Zero, or Far East of Eden Zero on the Super Famicom. This looks like a fantastic JRPG that was never released overseas. It has an English patch now online. Again, ripromhacking.net. You can get yourself an English patch, play this bad boy, and uh, it just looks fantastic. The graphics are all you'd expect from a Super Famicom era JRPG, and I've heard the story is fantastic, the characters are great, the combat system looks incredible. I am absolutely looking forward to playing this at some point. Number 9. Coming in at number 9 here, I want to play the later entries in the Yi series. So I have this, uh, I don't know, issue or whatever, where I have to start a series at the beginning. It's almost impossible for me to get into a series unless I start from the beginning. I played Dragon Warrior 1 when I was a kid. That's how I got into the Dragon Quest games. Now I didn't play 2 and 3 until much later, but I did play 4 shortly after uh, 1. And uh, Final Fantasy, I went back. I remember after playing Final Fantasy 8 for the first time and then 9, I went back and uh, actually I think even before 9, I went back and played Final Fantasy 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 1 because they had the Final Fantasy Origins. And then I played 4 and uh, Chrono Trigger, part of Final Fantasy Chronicles. And then I played 5 and 6 on Final Fantasy Anthology. And then gave 7 a try, wasn't really feeling it, and then I finally played 9 when it came out. So, I... That's just how I am, man. I always have to play from the beginning because I feel like and honestly know that I'm going to miss out on some stuff. Like even little in-jokes or little bits of uh, story or anything like that. Any, any, like, throwbacks and stuff like that. I want to be able to fully enjoy a game when I play it. And I feel like I miss some of that stuff if I don't start from the beginning. So I played East Books 1 and 2. I actually played them on Steam. And they were not my bag, baby. <laughs> they, I don't like mazes. I mean, if you watch the channel a lot, you probably already know. I'm not a big fan of mazes. I have no problem with grinding. I love grinding. But the mazes in that game were treacherous. I beat East 1, played a little bit of 2, and I was like, dude, this is basically the exact same game. The story was interesting in it. Like, I, I didn't dislike the story by any means. And I liked the characters and stuff like that. And the bump mechanics, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of bump mechanics. But honestly, it was pretty fun once you got the hang of it. I think I would like to get into the series. So I think I'm going to have to skip a few entries and just play some of the later ones. They are remaking, I think it's, like, 6 or something like that. And I've heard, like, basically six until the modern entries are all fantastic. So I'm basically just waiting for this remake to come out. And then when I get some time, I'll play through it. And then I'll probably play seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, maybe it's seven that's getting a remade. I, I can't quite remember. But anyways, the later East series is one of the games, if you will, that I, I'm looking forward to uh, eventually playing and checking out. Number eight. Coming in at number 8 is the Metal Max series. Metal Max is a series of JRPGs where you play as or pilot a bunch of tanks. I think it started on the NES, but I would probably start with the... Uh, there's a Super Famicom remake of the original, I believe. I think that's Metal Max Returns. I'm not 100% here. Uh, my buddy Juno is a huge Metal Max fan, and he's the one that is always recommending me to play this series. And, it, and, and don't worry, it is a series that is on my list. It is on my radar. I'm incredibly uh, excited to one day be able to sit down and play this series. My backlog, as probably all of yours is, is 
gigantic. But uh, this is a, this is a series I'm interested in playing. The gameplay looks phenomenal. It's got the right amount of comedy in it and stuff too. Like all the entries that I've seen look fantastic. I know my buddy Juno has said there's some stinkers in the series that I should avoid, but I'll probably give them a chance too, honestly. But honestly, the whole series just looks fantastic and is completely relatively unknown i think like you'd never hear people talking about the metal max series hopefully i'm bringing this to light for you for the first time if you've never heard of it and uh yeah check it out it looks fantastic maybe you can play through it before i get to it and let me know if you like it as well but i don't know just the whole aspect of playing as a bunch of like tanks and vehicles and stuff and using those to battle other tanks and giant machinery and stuff like that playing through like a i think it's like a post-apocalyptic desert setting is the is the the premise for the for the series for the most part but it just looks fantastic it looks like something completely different and it looks like something i would enjoy number seven Next up at number seven is Gravity Circuit. If you're a Mega Man fan like I am, you probably saw the trailers for this game a little while back and thought, wow, this looks fantastic. So I haven't played it yet. I've seen trailers and I just haven't had the time to play it, but it looks incredible. You even get like new abilities as you progress the game. I don't know if you get them from each of the bosses, like, like the Robot Masters in Mega Man or not, but the gameplay looks crisp. There's little extra elements added to it to separate it from Mega Man, and it just looks like an incredible game that I know I would love as a huge Mega Man fan, especially a huge classic Mega Man fan and Mega Man X fan for the most part. Number six. Next up is Legend of Ligaia 2. Legend of Ligaia 2 on the PlayStation 2 has been out for a very, very long time. It's a game that's always been on my radar. My friend Finney's, one of his favorite games of all time is Legend of Lagaya. So I remember getting him, I think it's just called Lagaya 2 or something like that. I remember getting it for him for like his birthday or something like that. And I don't know that he's ever played it. I think he played it a little bit and didn't like it as much as the first one. But then my buddy Fates, he played Legend of Lagaya and then played Legend of Lagaya 2, I think like back to back. And he actually liked the second one better. So now I'm even more hyped. Uh, if you've never played Legend of the Gaia, the thing that separates these games from other JRPGs, their combat is like, you put in like the commands, so like up, left, down, right, whatever, and then they do like martial arts attacks, so if you go, if you go like right, 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 left, you'll do like cross, 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 jab, and then some of these combos will have like special techs, I think they call them, basically special abilities, so if you put in like, say up, down, up, up, down, uh, they'll do like a, a backflip kick kind of somersault thing and or a flaming uppercut or something like that like it's the to me it's like the perfect mixture of like fighting game combos used in a JRPG setting now I know that after you've played the game for quite some time unless you're fighting a boss or something you might just put it on like the auto battle setting so you're not always having to put in all the different attacks but you can lock them in too like if there's a couple of attacks that you like doing or a couple combos that you like using the most you can kind of lock them in usually and then you can just select okay that's the one i'm gonna do so anyways fantastic game the first one was and i'm super excited to eventually finally check out legend of the guy 2 on the playstation 2. number five next up at number five is a newer game very new game actually just came out i think this past month or the month before visions of mana so this is the latest entry in the mana series a series that i've had a rocky relationship with i loved trials of mana trials of mana i played on an emulator kind of it was one of the first games i emulated actually was trials of mana it was already english patched the version i had and I played through it and absolutely loved it. We've been actually streaming Trials of Mana, three-player co-op with my buddy uh, DG Online and Fates on Sunday evening. So check that out if you haven't yet. But it's been so many years since I played it. I don't remember all the story beats and stuff like that, but I just remember having a great time. And then I remember playing Secret of Mana afterwards and just hating it because you have to wait to attack in order for your attacks to do any damage and you're constantly missing with all your attacks like the miss rate in secret of mana is incredibly high there are definitely reasons i 
didn't really like the series at one time, but I'm slowly giving it a chance. Most recently, I went back and I've been playing through Final Fantasy Adventure, which is the first game in the series on the Game Boy. And like I said, we've been streaming Trials of Mana and we've been having an absolute blast. I've been enjoying both of those. Afterwards, my buddy Fates and I are going to stream through uh, Secret of Mana co-op, but we're going to be using a turbo hack that takes away the need to wait between attacks and lowers the miss rate on your attacks as well. But anyways, Visions of Mana looks like the perfect realization in like a 3D uh, HD environment of the Secret of Mana franchise. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. The visuals are stunning. The characters look right on brand and the demo was fantastic. It played amazingly with one caveat. It ran like dog shit on the PS4. So I probably won't play this until I get a PS5 or they like fix the performance issues on the PS4. I'm not even like a graphics horror kind of guy, but I I can't do it, man. It's that bad. Like it chugs pretty hard. I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh, this only runs at 30 frames per second. And I'm, I'm not like a graphics horror in any way ever usually but when it's going from 30 down to like 17 or 15 i don't actually know much about frame rates but it was chugging hard dude it was it was rough ski on the ps4 uh, so whenever and if i ever get a ps5 i will definitely be getting visions of mana in fact that's the only game right now that i want to play on the ps5 so that's part of why i don't have a ps5 that and the price points ridiculously high number four Next up is the Star Ocean series. Now, I've played the first Star Ocean to completion. I played a little bit of Star Ocean 2, which is the next one I'll be playing eventually when I get to it. I'll probably play that new remake because it looks fan-freaking-tastic. But I've never played, I think it's called Till the End of Time, the third one. The third one on the PS2. I watched my buddy Paul play it a little bit back in the day on the PS2 when it first came out. And it looks really good. I did play, I think it's the fourth one, the one on the PS3. And it was like, not the best game ever, that's for damn sure. But it wasn't bad, it was kind of cool. It kind of had like those Star Trek vibes, which I love. I'm really looking forward to playing the rest of the Star Ocean series. I know I've heard there's some stinkers in there, but I'd love to give them a try anyways. And I've heard Star Ocean 2 is one of the best games ever made. Looking forward to playing 2 and honestly just all of the Star Ocean games that I haven't played yet. Number 3. Next up at number three is a weird one, the Lunar game on the Game Gear. So the Lunar series is an incredible JRPG series that kind of has the same charm and vibe as the Dragon Quest series. The characters are a strong point. The combat is really well done. The story is incredible. And they've got these animated like early 90s, late 80s anime cutscenes and stuff like that. And it just looks incredible. I can't say enough good things, honestly, about Lunar 1 and 2. If you're going to play them, play the uh, the PS1 remakes because they're the best way to go as far as I'm concerned. Sega CD games are good too, but uh, those are the way to go. But anyways, there was a Game Gear Lunar game and I don't know when it takes place. I know they're like in school, I think, but I don't really know what it's about even. I've seen little bits and pieces of David Vink's playthrough a long time ago when he like, I don't even know if he streamed it. I know he did like a Let's Play of it. I've always wanted to play it. I always have issues though. I have an issue patching games into English. So if I can't download the ROM already pre-patched, for some reason I can never get games to patch. In fact, we wouldn't be playing Trials of Mana if not for my good friend Vector, who was able to jump through a number of hoops to get the uh, three-player co-op uh, hack and English patch working on Trials of Mana, aka Seiken Densetsu 3 on the Super Famicom. So thank you so much for that, Vector. Maybe I'll have to send this to Vector. Maybe he'll be able to get it going for me. First of all, it's a hard ROM to find. And then to find the English patch, and now that ROM hacking not nets down, uh, it might be a challenge. I had them both at one time, so maybe I still have them somewhere, but I can never get it to patch. Anyways, I love the Lunar series and would love to experience more of that world that isn't Lunar Dragon Song, because that game's garbage. So yeah, that's why it's here at number three on the list. Number two. Number two is a series that I plan to get to sooner than later. I'm hoping to get to it either by the end of this year or early next year. And that is the Legend of Heroes or Trails uh, series. 
So I'm, like I said earlier, I need to start near the beginning or at the beginning of the series, like I did with East and many, many others. So I'll be starting with the Legend of Heroes. I think it's called like Dragon Slayer or something like that on the Turbo Graphics CD. So that's the, the one I'm gonna be starting with. It looks fantastic, honestly. It looks like a classic JRPG. It kind of looks like the Sega CD JRPGs that I'm used to playing as well. Shout out to like Vi and games like that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into that series. It looks like an incredible series. It has a ton of fans that, that, that are constantly talking about how great it is. That's a series that I'm very, very interested in getting into and I hope I can get to it sooner than later. Number one. Last but not least, number one, I mean, you knew this was going to be at the top here, is Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Comes out November 14th. I hope it does really well. I hope it does great so that we get the Zenithian Trilogy either in a similar style or I would love Dragon Quest 4 remade in the style of Dragon Quest 11. That would be, dude, my... It, it would, my heart would explode with joy. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. It's possibly the best version of Dragon Quest 3, which is a game that many people, including myself, fell in love with back on the NES. The Super Famicom remakes were incredible, but this looks even better. A ton of quality of life improvements, a ton of additions to the game, and it just looks fantastic. I'm still nervous that Pachisi might not be in here, but overall, looks like an incredible game and I'm very happy to experience it very soon. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 games I'm most looking forward to playing. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next one. Help me get to that 5,000 subscriber goal, and I will see you guys in the next one.